Hello, my name is Eric, and thanks for watching the latest update on the current World Petroleum Outlook. These slides are an extension of the presentation by John Peach during the online meeting hosted by Andres Vorigen, Peak Oil Chat, John Peach, Simon Michaud, Lila, Iver Lofing. This talk will cover the current status of oil discoveries and production, the mathematics behind Hubbard linearization, and why it shouldn't be applied to production data. Instead, we'll look at a model for oil discovery data that presents a much clearer view of where we are now. Cumulative discoveries and production data show what we might expect from the remaining reserves. Future production will require more energy to extract resulting in greater energy return on investment, or EROI losses. This shows annual oil discoveries and production. Outside of the discovery of Gawar in 1949, the maximum volume of discoveries happened in 1964. Since 1983 production has generally exceeded annual discoveries. In 2020, 20 billion barrels were discovered, but consumption has increased to over 36 billion barrels per year. The following year, 2021, discoveries fell back to 4 billion barrels, more typical of the past decade. Before 1980, production increased exponentially but has been linear since then. Discovery data was derived from the paper by La Herrera, Hall, and Bentley. Production numbers are from EIA and IEA data, and other sources before 1970. M.K. Hubbard was a petroleum geologist who worked for Shell Oil and taught at Columbia, Stanford, and Berkeley. He noticed that production from individual oil fields roughly followed a bell-shaped curve. He extended this concept to production from individual countries and total world production. He plotted annual production and cumulative production in a way that gave a straight-line graph. Extending the line to the point where it crosses the x-axis gives an estimate of the total amount of oil expected to be produced. His assumption of a bell-shaped curve depended on alternate energy sources coming online to replace petroleum consumption. He expected renewables and nuclear energy to be dominant after oil. If production had followed the bell shape that Hubbard assumed, then cumulative production would be an S-shaped curve, called a logistic function. On the right are linearization plots of world oil production, where the lines drawn through the data depend on starting and ending points. Even a fit to the latter part of the data shows a nonlinear trend. Fitting data to Hubbard's model has proved difficult because the assumption that production would follow a bell curve is not valid. Here's another view of production and discovery data. On the left is annual production which does not fit the Hubbard bell-shaped model. On the right is the plot of cumulative discoveries. Notice that it does seem to be S-shaped or a logistic curve. The equation for the logistic function depends on three variables or parameters. The most important one is D total, which represents the maximum of cumulative discoveries. Using standard curve fitting techniques, we can estimate these parameters and see how well they fit the data. Cumulative discovery data is better represented as the sum of two successive logistic curves. The first one from 1900 to 2000 might be thought of as the conventional era, and the second one from 2000 onwards could be called the fracking era. It's likely that the same access to easy credit that led to the fracking boom also incentivized exploration. This isn't meant to suggest that discoveries post-2000 were all in shale fields, but that the underlying economic events led to both outcomes. By separating discoveries into the two eras, we see remarkably good fits to the data. Conventional discoveries reach a maximum of 1990 billion barrels, labeled GB, and fracking ends at 250 billion barrels. Total discoveries using these fits would be expected to top out at 2,240 billion barrels.
using the fits found on the previous slide with a final projection of 2,240 gigabarrels would mean that discoveries will end shortly. While there was a large discovery of 20 gigabarrels in 2020, the number dropped to 4 gigabarrels in 2021. New oil fields are becoming increasingly difficult to find. It's now thought that production peaked in 2018. At that time, cumulative production was 1,500 gigabarrels, leaving about 740 gigabarrels remaining. If 2018 was the true peak, then the maximum occurred when two-thirds of the total available had been produced. Many people still believe that Hubbard's bell curve applies and that the peak will happen when half of the total reserves have been produced. But, because the initial assumption was false, the conclusion of a symmetric production curve is also false. This analysis excludes extra heavy tar sands in Canada and Venezuela. Combined production has been around 2 gigabarrels per year from tar sands. The estimated total reserves contained in tar sands reservoirs are approximately equal to the total from conventional sources, or about 2,000 gigabarrels. Tar sands require much more energy to produce than conventional oil. The cost is so much higher that without conventional oil inputs, it's not clear production could continue. For this reason, a better estimate of remaining tar sands reserves might be the current annual production times the number of years remaining of conventional oil. Energy is required to operate the heavy equipment, drilling rigs, and to transport crude oil to refineries. The energy needed varies from site to site but has been increasing as oil companies deplete easy access sources. The ratio of the energy derived from oil to the required input energy is called the Energy Return on Investment, or EROI. In their paper, Long-Term Estimates of the Energy Return on Investment of Coal, Oil, and Gas Global Productions. Victor Court and Florian Fizane develop a function to fit their estimates of the EROI for oil. They use two components in their model, a technological component and a physical component. The technological component models how rapidly oil companies learn to find and extract oil. Technology improvements happen very quickly because companies either improve operational efficiency or go out of business. Later, geological constraints overwhelm any technical changes as EROI losses increase with time. Expecting technology to overcome geological limits appears to be a false hope. Here is a graph of the EROI for several energy sources. The y-axis is the fraction of energy available for powering industrial society. The x-axis shows the ratio of the energy produced divided by the energy needed for production, or EROI. After the main technical hurdles were overcome, EROI for conventional oil was around 40 to 50. More recently developed fields have seen EROI fall to about 25. Charles Hall and others estimate that to maintain industrial services requires an EROI between 10 and 15. The EROI for tar sands in Canada and Venezuela are between 2 and 4, far too low to be useful without conventional oil inputs. Production tends to move from left to right, from high EROI to lower EROI. Since oil demand has increased steadily over time, then even more energy will be needed to produce lower quality fields resulting in a rapid descent over the net energy cliff. In summary, up until the early 1980s, more oil was discovered than annual production requirements. Since then we've been outspending our income, draining our petroleum bank account. World oil production does not fit the basic premise of Hubbard's model and shouldn't be used to predict future supplies. Instead, cumulative discovery data gives a much clearer picture showing that the era of large oil field discoveries is almost over. This will put an upper bound on production. Obviously, cumulative production won't exceed total discoveries, but depending on political and economic events, production may fall considerably short of the total available. Half of all oil produced has been in the last 26 years, and if 2018 turns out to be the true peak of production, 
than we were about two-thirds of the way through the total at that time. Finally, tar sands don't appear to be a viable long-term alternative. I hope this has been informative, and thanks again for watching.